Good morning. It is 3.56, so not quite morning. A storm just blew through, but it just blew over. I often, waving at my husband, I often uh, praise God for our sturdy little barn house. Here, let me show you. I'm pulling out. So it is a barn. <laughs> The cattle sometimes come and want on the porch. It is certainly not. The downstairs is done. That's the end with the kennel on it. The upstairs is not, but it is going to be because this year I have decided that it is all about faith, right? Here, I'll show you something else. Ace, you are being naughty to Peanut and you're trying to herd him around. Mr. Naughty Britches. Oh my gosh, is he gorgeous? He is a sweet ride. He's like riding a Cadillac. Ace. They've been laying down. It rained so hard that it got them all wet. I can't really pull down in there. What you doing? You fatty fatties? He's pushing. See? So Harley is the lead, of course, and then Ace, and then Peanut. Oh, he's rolling. They all old. It's a good scratch when you're nice and wet. Uh-huh. Ah, I heard that. Let a little air pass there, did you? <laughs> careful, careful. <laughs> he made a little fart. <laughs> I see you. Ah, he wants to. He wants to fuss. Peanut said, "You're going to see the back end of my hoofs. You're going to see the back end of my hoofs." So you can always tell who's the lead horse. He's the one not fussing. See? Peanut says, "Harley's mine." Ace is just happy to be up here with a little horse companionship because. He was down there alone for a long time. I mean, I've had Peanut down there off and on, and I had Harley down there off and on, but it's been a while since he's had any company. He's pretty happy. They're all obese. So we're about to build a pen for them right here so I can more maintain what they eat and what they... They're just out on this 33 acres eating. Not that it's got a lot, but it's got more than enough for these horses. You saw how fat they were. So yes, this year, this is January the 2nd, praise God. So usually like this whole New Year's Eve is this, I don't know, I want to pray the old year out in New Year. And I didn't feel that way at all. This is like another day for me. Although we did have some beautiful company. Oh, I was going to bring somebody, uh, Wyatt left his drinky cup. I was going to take it down and put it in his mailbox, but didn't get that done. Anyway, I don't think the mail ran today. I think they were taking today off. My little helper came back today. So excited to see her. I haven't got to question her about, she did tell me she had a good time in Fort Worth at her Christian retreat. <clears throat> but I haven't got to really hear any details yet. We've kind of been in opposite rooms. I've been in one room working. She's been in another room working. So Excuse me while I burp, please forgive me. That was terrible. I did just take some pills. Praise God for getting some rain. Our rivers are a little bit down right now. I need to come up here and fix this road with a hoedad. Um, so this is interesting. I had a precious sweet young friend that's helped us show dogs before. And she just messages me randomly and said, Happy New Year. And then she said, I watched a video It just that you just posted. And I said, well, I post several videos a day sometimes. I said, was it about the puppies? Was it about the horses? Or was it me talking? She goes, it was you talking. And so the last one I had done was, well, no, it was the next to the last one. I did. I think I uploaded one yesterday. It was a uh, 
2000, if you want to be free in 2023, we need to forgive. So I kind of like to revisit that. Although I would say this too, you can see when I am not spending 16, 18 hours a day working with the puppies that I feel a little bit better. I can get a shower, put my makeup on, and get on here and do some videos. I tell you, uh, I was about worn out. And it wasn't just the, I can handle four litters, because two went home and I still have two. It was that dippy litter of 14, we only have nine left, no fault of mine, not for not, not taking care of them, but uh, four of them had restricted esophagus. So that is a something they're not gonna get over, but I was taking constant care of them. They could not eat on their own. So I was tubing them and just taking quite a bit of extra care of them. So anyway, praise God, I'll see them on the other side. So anyway, to say, I said all that to say this, no one else, I didn't know of anyone else that could do what I was doing for them, taking care of them, so it was up to me to keep them alive. So, but anyway, God is good, God is amazing, and I have struggled with a lot of things. You know, people sometimes look at me and think, I don't know what they think, I, I, got, a, I got all my ducks in a row, that's not true. You know, and, and questioning God about, uh, God, if you love me, why did these puppies die? You know, God, if you love me, why is the enemy stealing from me? Uh, and I don't question God's love for me. I question sometimes why I don't have enough faith to see my puppies healed. Uh, but, you know, that's a matter of building our faith, building our faith. What kind of faith do you have? It's like saying, I'm going to go run a marathon. Well, you're not going to get in shape in a day or a month to go run 29 miles. It takes probably about a year to get in that kind of shape. So don't pretend like you're going to have faith to do some miraculous thing unless you are in the Word of God and you're building your faith. So that was my point on that. So God is never our problem. God is for us. He is not against us. He's cheering us on. So, I really didn't want to talk about faith today, but just to say, you know, just to say, I can, I can tell you all the things to do, but it's the degree that you believe God to see the dead raised and see the sick healed, right? I mean, I, on my goal list is to pray for people to see the sick healed, to see limbs grow out, to see the blind eyes opened and the deaf to hear. Yeah. That is, yeah, and if you think that's crazy or unreasonable, then you just haven't been around people that are doing it or seeing it. So, maybe it sh this should be about who we surround ourselves with, right? Anyway, I don't know why I said all of that. I kind of really wanted to talk about forgiveness. And it takes faith to forgive. Faith to forgive. Faith. Faith. And God told me this one time. You know the scripture that says, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, I, I shall repay. I never understood that until I heard this guy's testimony of being in hell. And this guy's name was Byron Mel Melvin. And he wasn't a Christian when he died, and he went to hell. <laughs> Jesus came and rescued him anyway. He actually came back to life in the hospital and quickly repented and gave his life to the Lord. Um, but he said he was walking on this horrible, dry, there is no moisture in hell. Uh, everything of your senses is magnified. Like if you think you can smell good now, you can smell better there, feel things here, feel better, feel things more intensely there. And so everything is magnified, just like in heaven, everything's magnified. 
so he was walking down this road, kind of a path, long path, and cell after cell after cell, and these cells were on top of each other, and they were in this spiral. And every time he would stop in front of a cell, he would just have his download of what the person's name, when they were born, actually kind of got to see a life's review of the person in the cell, the choices that they had made, why they were there, and what they were experiencing. And uh, he even saw Hitler there. It's a very interesting interview. Randy K did this interview. Not that he hasn't done other interviews, but his name is Byron Mel Melvin. And what was interesting to me too, because I bought the book because it wasn't on Audible, and he was saying every so remember that scripture that says uh, whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap so every act on earth every choice that we did not choose the right way we did not choose God every seed we sow be it our words our thoughts our actions our deeds injuring other people not being forgiving to other people not loving genuinely other people these are uh, seeds that we sow right and so in if you get forgiven and you go to heaven you know you you're not you're not that you don't get a life review and get to see them but your sins aren't held against you but if you go to hell every pain that you caused someone else is multiplied times a thousand times a million and you get to feel that so every seed that you sowed you are going to reap and I understand in this walking on this planet it's not necessarily that way and that uh, you know you plant a corn seed and tomorrow you don't have a harvest well, it's the same way with the things we do and the things we say. You don't always get a harvest in six seconds, 60 seconds, six hours, six months, six years. But there is coming a day that we will get a harvest, whether we're doing good or evil. Anyway. that verse that says vengeance is mine says the Lord I will repay I think that may be in Romans 12 because in Romans 12 that last verse in Romans 12 says do not be overcome with evil but overcome evil with good overcome evil with good so it's the enemy that wants to cause people to fuss and fight and hate each other and be offended and you know fuss and fight right it's like those horses out there. Who's the boss? We need to fuss and fight. So, the other thing about, if you haven't seen the interview, I'd really highly recommend. And the book. In fact, I've ordered more books. I ordered a dozen, I think, and I've given them all away. If you want a book, it's on Amazon. It's Byron Melvin. It's called A, a Land Unknown But Not Forgotten was the name of the book. But write me. If you want a book, I'll send you a book for free. If you'll read it or pass it on. He really addresses in there, is God good? Is God just? And so when I was, I think I was reviewing maybe his book or, or another book. Or maybe it was his book. Anyway, this confirmed atheist was talking about how horrible and guilty God was that God was worse than Hitler because people went to hell and so in this book it kind of really delves into is God just and would a just God send anyone to hell and so as Byron is walking through these corridors cell after cell after cell after cell after cell he was definitely came back with post-traumatic stress syndrome because he was plenty stressed seeing cell after cell after cell of 
people that would never get out. And so this was very interesting too. The demons kept accusing God of being unjust and they were saying things like, how could a good God, how could a good God do this? God's not good. God is evil. So they kept accusing God of evil. They just kept accusing God of evil. So I thought that was very interesting that we are doing the enemy's work when we are believing anything but the truth. And the truth is God is absolutely good, 100% good, always good, and always just in everything that he does. So anyway, I am where I'm going. So I've got to wrap this up about faith. I don't know. What was I talking about? Oh, about forgiveness. Be assured if you have someone that you need to forgive, let it go and let God deal with this person and bless them. And that's what God says to do. Be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. So, I don't know. Oh, Beth gave with the baby. Um, I'm not going to get to see the baby. He's gone. We must be going to check on cattle. Let me give him a wave. Hi, you! Thank you! <laughs> I'm not going to get to see the baby. So, let me pray for you because if you believe that God is not absolutely good, then get in the Word of God and prove that He is. He is. Um, he is. I'm here to tell you, He is absolutely good. And His judgments are just and they are right and they are true. So, thank you, Lord. We pray as an act of our faith as an act of obedience that if there are people that have offended us injured us on purpose or on accident we forgive them and we let them go thank you god and we pray father for freedom in 2023 we pray for restoration of our soul god we release unforgiveness from our soul and we bind the light of God and the love of God and the power of God to our soul we pray Psalm 23 that you would restore our soul that you lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake thank you God because that's your will green pastures still waters a restored soul yes that goodness and mercy should follow us all the days of our life. Psalm 23. Thank you, Lord. Amen.